We all know anything can happen out there. Sometimes we feel lost. We push and we suffer. We keep going. That makes all the difference. Hey, what happened to you, boy? You don't look so good. Uh -huh. Meatball? Look, somebody likes my meatballs. Hey, Paw Patrol, we got a race to win. Mm. Just Do you remember heartfelt family movies? Movies like Marley and Me, Cheaper by the Dozen, and Beethoven? Yeah, me neither. So imagine my surprise when I saw the trailer to Arthur the King, a movie about a stray dog that gets picked up by an adventure racing team in the Dominican Republic starring Marky Mark Wahlberg. But was Arthur the King any good? Does it live up to classics like Marley and Me and Beethoven? Join me, dear viewer, as I dive into the true story of Arthur the King. We haven't gotten movies like that in theaters in a long time during the dark age of cinema. It all comes down to the massive bifurcation of Hollywood. Thanks to franchises like Marvel, we have only gotten massively expensive blockbusters or super cheap indie films and a massive empty chasm of nothing in between. Production budgets ballooned to stratospheric levels up until Avengers Endgame. Movies costing upwards of two or even $300 million were becoming the norm. There was really no way to compete and studios didn't want to touch those mid-range movies that cost between 40 and $50 million. Some of them went to places like Netflix and Amazon, streaming companies with deep pockets. But that severely limited the audience these films would be able to cater to. So we were left with Marvel movies and small indie films from studios like Neon and A24. Now, don't get me wrong, there have been a huge amount of truly great films come out from the indie space. The indie space wasn't a place for nice, safe family films, though, but rather a place to experiment. It always has been. But now it looks like things are finally changing. After massive flops like Ant-Man 3, The Flash, The Marvels, and Madam Web, studios are finally starting to wake up and see that massive production budgets of $300 million take at least a billion to recoup the investment. And if you make a movie for 30, 40, or even 50 million, you might just be able to get your money back and turn a profit. 2023's Anyone But You proved just that. It was a simple run-of-the-mill rom-com it cost only $25 million to produce. And you know how much it earned in the global box office? A cool $214 million. So it more than recouped its production budget and made profits in droves. Arthur the King follows the life story of Swedish adventure racer Mikael Lindnord and his furry best friend Arthur through their trek in Ecuador. The film takes some artistic liberties, making Mikael an American named Michael Light, played by Mark Wahlberg. Michael is an adventure racer who is still struggling to claim a top prize in his sport. For anyone who doesn't know, adventure races are ultra-long foot races involving terrain navigation and multiple disciplines like running, hiking, cycling, swimming, and kayaking to make it to the finish line. Michael puts together a team of washed-up racers in order to compete in the Dominican Republic and get the glory they had always strived for but never gotten. It's a struggle for Michael to raise the funds, so he and his team arrive in the Dominican Republic mere days before the race without a chance to properly acclimate to the harsh heat and humidity of the island nation. But they trot on anyway, and along the way, a stray dog begins to follow them and guide them out of dangerous situations, such as a hidden cliff in the dark. The dog just wouldn't leave them alone, so they make him an honorary member of the team. I won't spoil the ending because you indeed do get an emotional Marley and Me type of scene, but suffice it to say the movie tugs at your heartstrings quite a bit. Arthur the dog had a pretty rough upbringing, having been abused and abandoned. In the film, we see a badly injured dog on his last legs, but loyal to the bone. Mark Wahlberg turns in a tender performance as Michael Light, and it truly feels like he's invested in making a heartfelt movie for families, and isn't just phoning it in his performance merely for a paycheck. Likewise, his teammates are archetypal characters, each with their own distinct personalities and lighter character arcs. Liam, played by Simu Liu, was the comedic element of the team, although he had his serious side as well. Natalie Emmanuel played the climber doing it for her dying father, and Ali Sullivan was the injured member trying to power through. This was a movie made for $19 million so even less than anyone but you. 
and it's now tracking to break even with the latest tally from the box office mojo saying it's up to 14 million at the box office. Considering the international numbers and complete lack of advertising, this movie will turn a profit. This is now the second movie that I can think of that would fit neatly into that mid-range budget for a film to become successful. Could this be the start of a new trend in Hollywood? I certainly hope so. Overall, Arthur the King was one of those mid-range budget movies we used to get before the dark age of cinema. It's a feel-good movie that's fun for the whole family. There's no progressive messaging or anything like that, which made it way more enjoyable. It's quite literally the underdog story you love to see. I definitely enjoyed this one, and you should too. But what do you guys think about all this? Do you think this is the start of a trend in Hollywood? Will we keep on getting these mid-range budget movies? And to those of you who have already seen this movie, did you like Arthur the King? Please do let me know down below in the comments, and as always, hit that like button, ring that notification bell, and smash that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one.